Hey there, and welcome to the Friday Night Community Race of Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise here on Free Enterprise 2. And you have joined the super cool S Club, which uh, is one of the really cool things uh, kind of leading into our tournament season where uh, you can form your own club and uh, get invited to the uh, tournament. So being the super cool S Club, my name is Sheep Launcher. I am here with my co-commentator, uh, changing his name just for tonight, Science Dave, because it's cool to be part of a team. Science Dave, how are you? I'm doing great, and it's fantastic to be in inducted into this wonderful Super S Club. And oh. joined by our restreamer, Scala Kitty, and our intrepid tracker, uh, Step Lively, we have our Moonvale Mixer flags tonight, the one of two flag sets that uh, will be featured during the uh, upcoming spring tournament, the Eblin Elixir League, which you should sign up for uh, if you haven't already. Uh, and Dave, what are you looking forward to in tonight's flags? Uh, given the type of flags that this is, I'm just looking for you know, lots of power, just go fast. I am interested, interested in that Rosa start. Yeah, so our hero is uh, Rosa, which uh, she can kind of scale up uh, agility-wise uh, really fast and, and can get you in kind of a, a tricky situation later on. But early game, uh, especially if you could find a decent set of bow and arrows for her, maybe a heroine robe in one of the T Wildest chests, she can really carry your team. That she can. Uh, I'll, it also depends who you guys are second. Uh, to yeah. anyone out there, you may notice this flag set looks sort of familiar. It's a mashup of various tournament flag sets from the past. Yeah, and we'll be talking more about the flag set as we uh, continue. But the Baron Guards or the Kaipo Guards uh, join or give two white mages just a Dragoon armor. We have Possumorpheus, Tybalt, Fiery Blizzard, Hushed Pyramid, all names that you should see in the Eblin Elixir uh, League, and we are glad to have you with us. And uh, we're going to see what our running side do with the Team Cleric opening. Are yeah, we... We, ha we have the good white mage and we have the other white mage. <laughs> we'll leave it up to the viewers to decide which is which. <laughs> and we, we did have a bunch mm -hmm. of different starts here. Uh, we did see the dwarf kit in this in our opening, which is a size of our money. That comes from our Lolly Ho League. Right? The Lolly Ho League's influence on this flag set. Awesome. Heading to Agart, uh, finding uh, life potions in the shop there. That dwarf kit is pretty much guaranteed money because it gives you 10 rune rings that you can. You never will actually need 10 rune rings, so you can uh, sell them off uh, for money early on. Now, in uh, comparison to the potion party uh, flags that uh, you may have seen on a previous uh, community race, the Moonvale Mixer flags do not contain only money in chests. The chests uh, are T Wildish, but they actually have items in them. Right, and we have wild we have Wildish Max Tier 5, which is, you may initially think sounds like standard with extra steps. But the big difference is Trap Chest and Zonk Check quality. Yeah, so uh, it may disincentivize uh, Eblin Castle a little bit, especially since there are no key items in, uh, in Trap Chest, as there might be in some other places. But it is uh, really good. Uh, looting if you're not planning on taking those trap chests early on, and that's what Tibble the Fire Blizzard are doing. Possum checking out uh, Troya Hush Pyramid into the uh, basement of Damsian. So uh, the key items in this flag set are going to be in the main spots, also in the summon locations and on the moon. No free key items, so Edward does not hand one to you. Uh, so uh, the uh, boss hunt for that D-Mist is on, uh, wherever that D-Mist is 
found, uh, you defeat it, you go back to Rydia, check on Rydia, or go back to Mist, check on uh, Rydia's mom, you get a key item from her. And speaking of boss hunts, we also are on, we also have two boss hunt objectives, the Pabul Gauntlet and Golbez. Both of these the inf as, are the influence from ZZ5. Yeah, uh, always a lot of fun to uh, encounter Golbez wherever he is. Uh, so you can, you know, slow down, get a drink. Uh, there, there's a two drink minimum at the Golbez uh, Comedy Club. All Gauntlet, also a fan favorite. Uh, the Fabul Gauntlet has been replaced uh, by an Alt Gauntlet with five random encounters from the surrounding area. And it could lead to some of you know, our favorite encounters. Senator Crocodile might show up. Uh, yeah. Could be evil masks and behemoths. Holding a required hook, maybe. So uh, there are eight objectives in, uh, and they are listed in the middle. Our runners have to complete six of them in order to get the crystal uh, to defeat Zeromas. No win game uh, re uh, requirements here. Yep. That's correct. Win game is in the other flag set of this tournament, the Potion Party. It's all very clear. And uh, Fiery Blizzard uh, equipping that Porum uh, with Medusa arrows and a short bow uh, to try and get a little bit of early game damage. Try to get another character, and I believe uh, Fiery Blizzard is the first person to check out who is on Mount Hobbs. And we get... There's an old man and an Octoman on Hobbits. Vanilla Jason, I guess. Yeah, that's an old man wandering a mountain. Uh, Octoman in his way at some point. Sure, if you squint. Uh, but uh, Tala could be quite useful for uh, this early part. It comes equipped with Exit, uh, has Cure 2 uh, to start, and then can uh, get even more spells. Uh, once you summit Mount Ordeals, of course. And we will see... We'll likely see our runners doing that because it's a key item check. Cecil's guaranteed, guaranteed to be somewhere in this seed and with wildish traps. It's a good chance you're going to find a big stick for him. Yeah, I believe uh, our runners have already found a black sword hidden in the back of the watery pass. Uh, black sword, by far the most useful sword for Dark Knight Cecil. Still not very good, uh, but uh, Cecil as a paladin uh, really wrecks shop, and that's why he's restricted. Uh, the uh, Cecil and Fu will only show up in this flag set if they do at all uh, behind a key item. That's true, although it could be something as simple as find a sand ruby and you get one of them. That's true. A sand ruby is a key item. And the sand ruby could be hidden or, in its in its uh, vanilla spot. And Did possibly, you see that in the waterfall? Yeah, that's a big discovery. Uh, trying to hide in the waterfall, that was a D-miss. So that is big, big information. Not something anybody wants to tackle right away because the <laughs> waterfall spot super quick. Right, it's that fast because in the vanilla game, you're that's Octoman and you're supposed to be slowing it down as you hit it. Right, so uh, in a uh, with an enemy that does not lose limbs <laughs> as you defeat it, uh, that speed is just going to keep up through up the entire fight, and what uh, Demas does with that speed is <laughs> change his form so that you can't hit it and just waste a lot of time. I'm not sure Demas has any limbs to lose. No, just the big one. Hush Pyramid uh, checking out the Back of Hobbs, I didn't see anything super back there. Yeah, nothing exciting. 
the back of Hobbs is one of those places on T Wildish that uh, would normally contain a little bit better loot uh, because it's not strictly required uh, in uh, this flag set. Uh, but yeah, that's, a... Go on. That's, one of, that's one of those places that, you know, you check it out because you got talent and you can just exit. That was a nice pickup on Fire Blizzard's side. The, the chest you walk by in Antlion has a curse string. Ooh, very nice. And gets a free boss uh, in the bottom of Antlion Cave. And unlike in the Potion Party flag set, uh, the Dark Imps are actually free. They do not contain the boss bit, so they can be stopped. But uh, in a place like the uh, Antlion Cave, they are not all that threatening, and Fire Blizzard will just try to blaze through them as quickly as possible. Yep. One Stardust, then you're done. They only have 334 HP apiece here. And that's the Twin Harp from Ant from Antlion. That, that's, it. that's required. That is required. So it's not technically required, but it's pretty much required. Uh, you got to complete six out of the seven objectives. And uh, yeah, it's available to you. You might as well go for it. And we haven't actually seen underground access, so it may be hard required. That's very true. Or we just need to have the gauntlet there, maybe. <laughs> Who doesn't love extended music? Seriously. Although, uh, the gauntlet would be there. Golbez, although it would take a long time, would not be great because Golbez is a jerk and changes the music. Yeah, Golbez just thinks his team is better. I would disagree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just being a jerk. And so all four runners have now gotten their twin harp. And it'll be interesting to see uh, where they... Uh, where they take it in their overworld checks uh, if in fact they are not forced there oh. is Tibble going to take the Demist right now? It, it would be a big play I'm not sure where he's going to find all of the uh, damage that he's going to need to get through this relatively quickly and you see how fast that Demist is he got two punches off before a menu even popped for Tybalt. And we do have 14 runners here tonight, four of them uh, on screen, but we'll keep you updated as to the uh, progress of the other runners. It is great to uh, see more runners uh, coming in to uh, hone their skills before the big uh, Eblin Elixir tournament. It's almost like there's some sort of event coming up that, bring, <laughs> that does this. Yeah, so, um... Jeremy's gonna show us, that's some common... That, the comedy club has come to Fabul. Wow! Golbez taking his show on the road. Taking laughs all over. This is great for our runners to find early. You don't have to waste time seeing Shadow eat three people. Yeah, so Shadow will only uh, eat one person. And then, uh... And then we'll see if there are enough J items left uh, for our runners to dispatch of gold as quickly after that. Uh, a Star Veil would be nice. The magic power isn't overwhelming at this spot, but a virus would certainly destroy yeah. any of their... <laughs> and, any of and a lit 3 just outright drops any of these mages. It, yeah. They simply don't have HP to even take a one roll lit 3. Fire Blizzard, meanwhile, heading up Mount Ordeals, finding an Odin in the first spot, and a Zeus Rage uh, conks him out. A, a casual 3k against Odin. It's one way to deal with him. Back attack. Ugh. Ew. Yeah. Yeah, it, your computer problems come find you. DPU sneaking up on our runners at the back attack spot, and this is ugly. You're probably trying to, I think I've had nightmares that start this way. Ah. And Tibble just threw that D mist. Well done there. Gets a, a couple of items in the chest as well.
And that might have been another reason why Tybalt wanted to take that Demis is because the uh, back of the waterfall, uh, one of the best places to get treasure in the overworld. Uh, we'll see what uh, Rydia's mom has for us. And Tybalt gets... The Magma Key. That Demis is required. Meanwhile, Possum and Pyramid through the gold is getting Sand Ruby for their trouble. That's a game of character check. And a Leviathan in the chest. And if that's Iridia in the bed, suddenly our <laughs> runners have a car washing kid who can uh, swamp just about anybody. Both heading into Baron Inn, that, and I didn't see who was there, but was I think not that was Porum having a chat with the vanilla Baron guards. Because I saw two blue sprites. Yeah, that so uh, unless that was two blue robes, uh, that would be Baron guards. Which would then mean that it's Officer Soldier that gave us our starting key item. Correct. And Tybalt is going to drop the magma key in the well right away. I really like this uh, from Tybalt to kind of go around, check your freebies in the underground, see who is uh, at the King Queen spot, uh, set up a double dip of Fabul. Ooh, and a strength ring lying around in Kaipo. This could also be a play at trying to find a heroin rope for sale. And both Possum and Hushed Pyramid turning in those Sand Rubies and getting a Yong. Karate Man wakens from the slumber. A good character to pick up at this point. You're not relying on him for damage, uh, so you can wait while he levels up. But uh, once he gets going, uh, he'll be a great source of physical damage. Fiery Blizzard through the CPU. Yes, I know it's not technically over, but it's just an attacker left. It's all over, but the shouting. And uh, I was talking a lot today more on stream. <laughs> Bibble picks up a samurai uh, armor, a ninja hat, and a sword robe from Dwarf Castle. Did not find the uh, J on MC1 and only either twos in the item shop. Now we're going to find out what is Rosa's ordeal. You can just see here how Rosa will have to fight the changing room alone. Yes, uh, certainly not the worst character to take all alone into uh, into the changing room. But, uh, you know, Rosa doesn't have to face a dark version of herself because I don't think that exists. Hmm. What is the Earth Crystal we get from that? That's two more character checks. And, well. And that makes and that. The treasure. And the treasury. And that makes that Twin Harp even more uh, enticing. That is a Wyvern in the changing room. That is super scary, but just pollen. We just have to end the fight before Rosa takes another 150 ticks of sap. It's fine. <laughs> when you see Wyvern uh, facing all alone, your heart stops for a second. Goodness. Devil did check the Job Dwarf, a horticulturalist. So I'm sure the Job Dwarf has opinions about the pollen attack that Wyvern leveled. I'm glad one of us knows what that means. <laughs> yeah, horticulturist, a plant person. Ooh, a nice hourglass, too, uh, from Tybalt there. Awesome, onto those orbs. Yeah, there's, there's honestly just no quick way through these, not with the party we've got. No. Got him. 
Does it go through them one arrow at a time? And yeah, it, it's it's like one of those things where you know you're getting the updates on your computer and it's just at 36% for a lot longer than you think it should be. Uh, and it uses Windows averaging algorithm and nothing makes <laughs> sense. And then you find a barren key in the from the Thamark freebie, which is also an objective. Everything's coming up Tybalt so far. And again, no. not a great item shop in the underground. We are rolling in objectives right now. That's also not a terribly good armor shop. I guess there's really no uh, competition down here. It's since it's so out of the way. So they don't feel like they have to uh, they have to compete on stock. Fiery Blizzard's going back into Eblin. Gonna bust out this uh, shiny new stone spell. Ooh. And the king and queen in the Fey March, uh, a lunar sparkle, uh, which we know is not wyvern, but otherwise have no information on, and a karate man yang. So uh, very free, that karate man, if and when Cecil shows up. Otherwise, will be painful in that queen spot. And uh, you'll have to deal the full 25k there, which... Could take a bit, and while you're still getting pummeled, uh, thwacked, and kicked, yeah, at a <laughs> at a very fast spot. So not as uh, physically imposing as the king spot, but even faster. So those kicks will come out uh, even uh, more frequently. I believe that was a crystal ring from the mad ogre chest. Ooh. Meanwhile, Tibble taking his own trap chest, the alert uh, chest, at least one of them, in the lower tower of Babel. Get a stop eye on the alert. Uh, you finished off at your leisure. What do you suppose Tibble is looking for here, Science Dave? Uh, I'm not sure. This could be anything. Yeah, I'd be I'd be tempted with uh an armor. Well, that'd be very nice. Ooh, a Murasame. Um if Ed shows up, I would be uh attempted to save one or two trap chests in the lower tower, uh in case there are no other ways to find sirens. A very good point. We did see the Black Eyed Lamia chest gives an Avenger. Ooh. So, yeah, get one of the sword swingers and you got yourself a party. Unfortunately, nobody who can swing a sword has showed up yet. I've always felt like Yong could do it if he really wanted to. That goes against the monk's code. Does it? I suppose it. <laughs> uh, Yong would tell you that. <laughs> Oh, and Telelife really working out for Fiery Blizzard through those three trap chests in a flash. Yeah, defense sword. Not that, too bad. Although, Cast Level not paying out the tier 8s this time. Yeah. So, uh, one of the things about the earth crystal is you could get a lot of good stuff but not a lot of tremendous stuff uh because of that max tier five right so it might still be worth going after the treasure if you're intent on trying to find a heroin robe maybe a samurai bow and arrow and possum heading into uh heading into baron inn uh, finding that Porum guarded by Dark Knight Cecil uh, at the beginning, and Kainatso coming out of the woodwork. Okay, it was DKC, so the second spray I saw must have been a uh, random NPC. Yeah, it could have been that Baron Inn lady who... She always seems to want to step in and uh, stop at whatever it is you're doing. Like, you can't fight in here, this is the war room. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> so, big holy sword from Tybalt and a darkness crystal from Possum. I didn't catch that. Was that actually the holy sword? That was an Excal. So okay, not the holy sword, but a pretty darn good one. And Tybalt, uh, not going to stop once that big crystal sword, I think. Or, uh, or something else. Going for, trying for a second tier 8 in Babel, that's a bold play. It worked out once for me, and so I'm gonna defend it all the time. Just a rune ring. Oh, how disappointing. Is that, I'm thinking that play may have been for an adamant armor as well. Hmm. Again, talking about our past flag set influences, or tournament influences, the Adamant Cup shows up by giving us, well, Adamant Armor and the extra objectives. Hushed Pyramid getting through his Wyvern. No problem. Secures that Earth Crystal. Awesome remembering the Demist and heading back. So, uh, you're seeing, you're seeing here, Possum Morpheus would really rather do this ultra quick d uh, than, uh, than take on either that Twin Harp or that Earth Crystal. I don't blame anyone for fading the Twin Harp right now. You don't really have a quick way through that fight. Especially because Tella's magic doesn't work on it. Hmm. That's true. And uh, Possum is through that Demist. Uh, the duplicate Porum he picked up from the Baron Inn. Uh, duplicate characters are allowed. And if you have two Porums, you can use twin magic. And that really worked well against that Demist. Right, uh, because every character is available, there is only one duplicate, duplicate character, so now we know it is Porum. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, see, maybe is not on, so every character is guaranteed somewhere. Now, it could be in the back of the giant, but every character will show up at some point. Hey, back of the giant counts as somewhere. True. Yeah, and it could be in the package. Who knows? Or maybe we're about to find one, a, one of our big characters in Baron Castle. Yeah. Uh, only Tybalt has the Baron Key so far. And he's setting up that uh, uh, that Yong check. I imagine Fubul will be first on his list. Do see Possum and Fiery both launching the whale. They may want to ch take a peek at who's up on the moon. Yeah, that's a character check. That's a shop check. Uh, if uh, any sirens have been encountered, which Tibble did use a, a couple of them, uh, if they have hourglasses, uh, could potentially uh, get some gold dragons going on in Cave Bahamut. Meanwhile, I do have the Hush Pyramid taking on the Kainatso. But to get the good news, there's darkness behind here. So one of the more interesting uh, flags to me and to Dave, uh, and this comes uh, back, I believe, from ZZ3, is the can't run flag is on. Right, that makes you know, doing things like, say, setting up a D-Machine fight ride a little trickier yeah still doable uh but it uh really uh, makes you have to do your homework in order to uh set that up you can't just uh go wandering around turning counters on and feel like you can run away from whatever you don't want to uh you don't want to deal with also if you if you are inclined to take on encounters on, say, LST4 for some extra levels to never seed. That is advisable now. Yeah. 
because you can't run away from your problems. That's what you think. <laughs> both exactly. Fi <laughs> both Fiery Blizzard and Possum Morpheus finding a moon summoner. We already have two moons. Why do you need to summon more? <laughs> and I, I think Fiery Blizzard uh, has uh, had an extra spot and ready to fit right in. I don't think Possum Morpheus was interested in taking the kit. And we do see that uh, we pay a visit to the Hummingway Party House. And they got wine. And now you, now you know why they're having so much fun in there. They got wine for sale. And look at this. Hushed Pyramid is the first of our runners to go after that Twin Heart. How about that? It's an objective. I can, I can hear the grumbling all the way from, you know, yeah, however far away we are. Yeah, uh, 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 you can hear it through uh, through through his screen. I'm going. Uh, uh. Ooh, Tibble gets the pass from Sheila. Oh, that those are some goods. It makes the dark display more interesting. It sure does. Well, one of the things we never change in all of its uh, changing is uh, we never have the vanilla harp song on. Instead, we, uh, from the very earliest days of Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise, we have a random song from the world of video games uh, in, the, in Eddie's repertoire. And so, we hope you enjoy.
All right, Scarlet. Was there some added magic done that we didn't know about? Scarlet's claiming that was completely random, but I don't believe there's such a thing. I think the randomizer has some sentience. <laughs> yeah. Mario music for Mario Day. Yeah. I remember happy... we had Odeo Mist for the Live Alive theme. <laughs> happy March 10th, everybody. It's a uh, it. It's a uh, today. March 10th. Other things we saw going on while they, they were dueling twin harps that gave the spoon, but more importantly, plus one objective. Yeah. Uh, uh, and Fiery Blizzard does have that spoon. And Fiery having cleared that twin harp out as well, and we'll be heading probably up to Zot. So most of our runners have two objectives complete. Having defeated both uh, gold beds. I am. All right. We are going to play a favorite game. Great treasury. Oh, I saw a dragoon armor, an assassin dagger, I think a dancing dagger, and a dancing. Yeah. So far, it's an eighty percent treasury. Rex, nice. A tiara, worth picking up. Go ninja shirt, go ninja shirt, go. Go ninja shirt, go ninja shirt, go. Lunar staff, charm rod, the very max your five treasury. Yeah. Yeah, nothing spectacular in there, but we knew that was going to be the case. Uh, that uh, tiara will be helpful uh, if. <laughs> if Edge ever shows up, there are a couple darts for him. True. Tim all this scaler deals while we're while we're doing that, and Possum has decided to go say hi to Daryl and his brother Daryl and his other brother Daryl. And Fiery Blizzard is going to, after raiding that treasury, take that Earth Crystal up to the Tower of Zot, and it's going to try and pet a dog. On his way up. I like this play on Wildest Traps. I At least the it. first two chests. Uh, if it's not in one of those two, I just mm. decide it's not worth it. Yeah, the other chests are way out of the way. Uh, and sometimes it could be worth it. The, uh, the Flame Dog itself, uh, pretty easy to defeat, uh, especially with this party. Uh, will not be an issue. It's just a long walk, and you don't know what you're going to get. Let's see if Fiery thinks the same way. If it's in the first two, great. Otherwise, not worth it. To, not worth the effort. That's all the screen transitions you have to do. If if you guess wrong, it's like six extra doors. Yeah. Oh, and all of the elements showing up uh, for Fiery Blizzard. as Tybalt obtains his Earth Crystal and will get his uh, a ticker check with uh, Wyvern uh, being the uh, being the boss in the changing room just doing pollen. That was a very quick elements fight. One fire three and it's over. Yeah, the uh, Mylon Z at the front of the elements fight, very weak to fire has half of the HP of the uh, total uh, of the total spot. And if that fire weakness uh, gets through that entire pool of half HP, it's over. Hey, you, you get to skip the second phase. Yep. You see, Palin's the first character up here. We're running out of mages to find. <laughs> yeah. Where are all the... Uh, where are all the bruisers here? No, the only mage left is Fusoya. Which means, show us who. <laughs> and Possum finishes his grind, and, you know, <laughs> there he is! A, a mop is tied up! 
Where are all the bruisers? It's all mages. No. So what you're saying is the back room of this was just the cleaning closet. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of the, uh, the, the, the really optimal play is what Possumorpheus has done. If you have all mages, you do D-Machine. Wow. <laughs> this is this is really something. And Fiery Blizzard decides to ditch Ridia. Interesting choice. That that could be preserving for a slingshot later. It's easier to preserve someone for a slingshot if you don't have to keep knocking them down. True. So any character that gets dismissed will be available in the Tower of Wishes. Uh, just hanging out. Not really doing anything. Yeah, just, just doing wishes things. Yeah. You hope they give him a tablet or something. Especially Rydia. You want to limit her screen time, but you can't keep her there. Bored with nothing to do. Oh, well, fortunately, there's a, there's a porum there as well. Yeah, at least they can... Uh... At least they have somebody to talk to. They can cause havoc for the Elder. Does the Tower of Wishes itself have books, or do you have to leave in order to get to the library? Mysidia itself has a, a really nice library. Yeah, it's a mage town. You gotta assume there's a nice library in it. Yeah. Possum did keep uh, that Rydia and is teaching her all of the summons she needs to know. It's also taught her almost all the spells she needs to know. Fiery Blizzard is through. We'll get to find out what is waiting for him right outside of Baron. Doesn't have the Baron key. Tybalt does, and Tybalt will do the ultimate. Uh, we'll be able to do the ultimate kind of uh, uh, path. That Twin Harp into Earth Crystal into Baron Key is a gorgeous thing. Yeah, well, you can pull it off. And two of those three are objectives in the route, so... Mm -hmm. Feels pretty good. It sure does. Okay, Fiery Blizzard had not yet done Fool. I did not see the key item that Fiery Blizzard picked up. It was a defense sword, very key. Yes. Uh, and for the uh, Kini doesn't have, and in fact, uh, Fire Blizzard did do those trap chests and does have a defense sword already. So you know. So two defense swords for the non-existent Kane. <laughs> I appear I'm about to find the Baron key as well. Kane, the ultimate betrayal and not being available to us. Kane not available to us either physically or emotional and emotionally. And what you're seeing here is the kind of thing that can happen. We create a flag set that's high loot power, it's high power all around, and the randomizer just says, nah, you're getting all mages. Yep. And Tybalt will be the latest to celebrate Mario Day. I'm about to find out the uh, fun news about this day, March. <laughs> Let's listen to this delightful song again. Thank you. 
And our third Ode to Mario Day has now been completed and we'll be rewarded with an objective and a spoon. So Possum taking on Dwarf Castle. Bygen in the first spot here uh, for the wrong party or the underleveled party could be very, very nasty. Uh, but as chat pointed out earlier, levels solve a lot of problems and they will solve this Bygen. As does uh, putting Bygen through the car wash a few times. Yep, so the arm grind will be kept uh, to a minimum. And uh, we have seen King, Queen, Eblin will be in the second spot, so that will be trivial for Possum to uh, get through. And while our runners are kind of retracing everybody's steps uh, for a little bit, do want to thank our intrepid tracker, Step Lively, our wonderful restreamer, Scala Kitty, and uh, thank you, Science Dave. Uh, for joining the super cool S Club and joining me for a community race of the Moonvale Mixer of flags, a kind of preview for the upcoming tournament. It's a delight to be with you. And big thank you as well to you, Sheep Launcher, for keeping us nice and breezy. <laughs> we did by day. Hey, there's a melee character. They have to be somewhere. I think we're just the <laughs> factors. <laughs> Wow, so, and Possum, even though he's already done his grind, says, come aboard, Kane. I know exactly why that Kane will be taken. And why is that? We haven't seen a certain tornado yet. Ooh, yeah. Uh, so the one thing, uh, the one enemy that could really ruin even very well leveled mage parties is a badly placed Val Valis. Hushed Pyramid That's... is checking out the officer soldier fight in Baron. And we'll get another character check. Just a coffin on the officer and the fight's effectively over. Yeah, so obviously when your officer goes down, uh, you just instantly start fighting your fellow soldiers. Confusion obviously. confusion in the ranks. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> that was a pan from Dwarf Castle and just an apple from the Warp Glitch. And that pan is big. Another two key item checks. Fire Blizzard did take down that evil wall in Mist Cave. Uh, really wants to get that Fusoya online Fu. Of course, with each boss defeated, gets another 100 HP and another three semi random spells. Well, good news, I think we've pretty much found all of the spells for Fu, haven't we? Yeah, I don't. I can't imagine Fire Blizzard has too many more bosses to go, if any. That uh, evil wall might have been the icing on the cake. Hush Pyramid going into the throne room. Not too many bosses that could be threatening here. Uh, Ashura will be annoying, uh, but this party should take care of her. And if you got anything, any sort of uh, mage slaying gear, I believe we found mute arrows at some point. Yeah, a 
uh, mute arrow with any decent uh, kind of bow, uh, will uh, Rosa will slice and dice her way through. And in fact, Hush Pyramid did berserk Rosa. And tell us with going to a virus, like, I'm helping! <laughs> I'll cast virus if it kills me. Like, don't be so dramatic. There's only one spell that can do that. If it kills me! <laughs> Ooh. And Hush Pyramid did uh, get that cure four. See that cure four on Ashura. Bummer. Okay, now I'm wondering what kind of bow Rose is doing, because I think I just saw her whiff from the center slot. Yeah. And then uh, did a, a lot lower damage. I'm wondering what's going on there. And Possum going to check out the Lunar Sparkle, and it's Ogo Pogo. Kind of an ugly, ugly Fey March. And decides he uh, not is not equipped for that. There are some. Uh, there is a lunar sparkle there, namely plague, that you can take care of, uh, no matter what your HP is. But Ogopogo, you need to be fully rested. And even then. You immediately start to fight down hacker HP. Ogopogo is just going to drop whoever it swings at. Yeah. Yeah, even a well leveled party, Ogopogo does not mess around. And the Canadian menace in this seed is hanging out down under. And there is a hey. paladin in Baron Castle. Hey, there's the guy. <laughs> Look, it's the guy who swings that sword. Wait, what sword? <laughs> well, uh, some runners have seen an Excal. And Possum going to try taking on Karate Man. Hey, slightly safer fight because you can actually use magic on this without getting blown up. <laughs> yeah, that's the real issue with uh, Ogopogo is uh, you try using any kind of decent magic against it, it has counters for days. Just a ninja sword for, or Murasami for the for trouble game through Baron, but it is one more objective for the pile. That is objective number three lit up for Hush Pyramid. And that is a character check, a, a character that you really, really want to see. So very much worth it. So what are we and still looking for? We're looking for the hook and pink tail. Yes. Both sides of the forge or the gaunt or the gauntlet. Yeah, uh, we'll need uh, two out of three of those. And there's a pink tail on Possum Morpheus' side. Hmm. Oh, I had a hook to that, and you've got yourself an adamant armor. Yeah, and an objective. It would be hilarious oh, if if Ogo had the hook. I, I guess objectives are important too. Yeah. You could skip one. And looks like Hush Pyramid's gonna be setting up for a D machine grind. Taking some encounters outside Baron. And yeah. this is one of the more fun parts of setting up the grind. Since you can't run from the encounters, you actually have to finish them. As you're trying to preserve a slingshot. Although, with how little XP these encounters give. Yeah. No. Probably not a big deal. Uh, it's not like anybody's going to. Uh, get rich on a float eye grind. You ever try to do a float eye grind? 80 XP at a time? Is that sort of like grinding boars? <laughs> Might as well be. God, it's fast. <laughs> 
sword rats you know all the great all the great early baron enemies Not even the dark imps, just regular imps. Oh, he's well, a fantastic grind too. It's a whole EDXP for those four imps. <laughs> ah. Should have uh, should have tried to get life glitches off on him. Get even more. And you you could get an amazing what 140 if you like yeah. three of them. <laughs> just an embarrassment of riches. Well, just as a reminder, our runners are, are looking for six of the seven objectives listed in the center of your screen there. We only have five slots, but there are seven objectives. Uh, and uh, the uh, objectives are uh, lit up to... Uh, once they get six out of the seven, they are given the crystal uh, with which they will defeat the big boss at the end, Zeromus. That's right. It's yeah. As we said earlier, unlike the other flag set that we play in the Evelyn Elixir League upcoming, this one is win crystal rather than win game. And if you're interested in playing this kind of flag set, this it will be featured in our upcoming tournament. Yeah, and the really cool thing about the upcoming tournament for the first time, we have a team tournament going on. We've we've had uh, team events, the uh, Troyan Tango uh, kind of event, but this will be the first team tournament. And uh, Dave, I know you're signed up. I know you've had some uh, team play experience. What do you like about uh, playing this kind of flag set uh, with a team? It, it's going to be fun once you and once you get your team set up, you can kind of practice together, learn from each other a little bit. I think that's going to be the best part of this event. Yeah, both flag sets uh, are really wide ranging. They have a lot to do. Uh, so uh, that will be the uh, nice part is you can have uh, uh, teammates there to kind of solve the work for you. Are you going to be playing this upcoming event, Sheep? You know, it's uh, it's tough enough when I'm just disappointing myself. Uh, but <laughs> uh, it, it, this is an event I will be keeping a, a very close eye on, and who knows, maybe you'll see me. Uh, one of the things we have is you'll be playing against any games you'll be playing this event, it will be against players similar to your skill levels, where there won't be, say, an, it's, it, an entirely new runner going against the likes of, you know, a, a Postmorpheus or a Tybalt or. Fiery or pyramid. No, and and uh, that is one of the cool things is this tournament is open to all skill levels. So uh, we really want to encourage you to get on in there. And Fire Blizzard gets a package. And Possumorpheus will get his as well. And so well, if you're in Fiery Blizzard's shoes, is there anybody at that package you would want to take? Edge. Edge would be useful. And even then, I... I just don't think you take it. I don't think you take anyone there. Yeah. You've got a Fusoya, you've got a Kane. I just don't... Well... I would consider Cecil, but we know Cecil's not there. But right. We do know where the gauntlet is. In the barren basement. I was hoping gauntlet would be behind package. I'm always hoping for that. <laughs> Instead, no, we've got the barren house party going on. And Sheila's yeah. got the goods. Legend sword. And Tibble will be able to conjure up an objective as soon as he uh, gets through this. The Baron Basement, uh, kind of a fun place to have in all gauntlet because the conjurers don't actually show up in Baron. 
uh, but these are taken from the kind of equivalent uh, difficulty spot in the game, which is in the Fame Arch. Right, because you don't get access to the Baron Basement until you visit the Fame Arch for the first time. It wasn't a rock. It was a rock moth. Ah, <laughs> ah. Rock moth. That was good. And each conjurer conjures a different, uh, a different monster, which I appreciate. I don't think our runners appreciate what's coming after this one. <laughs> Which one is next? Remind us, Dave. Uh, I believe it goes, uh, clap on. <laughs> well, first they have to get through this huge naga, uh, which is definitely a, a snake or dragon. Uh, yeah, it's a snake, dragon, ghost thing. I I don't know. Well, obviously it's a dragon, because first you draw an S for snake. Of course. And you add arms. Then you, then you draw a more different S. No smoke or fire. No wings. So it's not a wingling dragon. I know where you're going. I don't remember this explanation. <laughs> I could go literally all day. Luckily, Possumorpheus is going is going to interrupt me. Well, that's good because I'd have to try I would try to attempt to hit that note for Trogdor. Hmm. Turns out when you wield ultimate destruction, ant lines in this cave go down or go away a lot faster. Or ant lines at the magnets go down a lot faster. Yeah. And meanwhile, uh, Tybalt is going clap off, defeating the football gauntlet. Oh, and that's double required. Yeah, that is a hard required Baron basement. So we're going to be seeing a lot of the Wait. clapper. That's Gauntlet Golbez. Magnus, we know where Forge is, Baron yeah. Castle, and Moon. We're in no mode here. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, Crystal Sword Altar is available to uh, all of our runners. They all have the Darkness Crystal. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Tibble just needs that Legend Sword, and we know where it is. Tibble needs to find the pan. And Hushed Pyramid taking on the uh, D machines. Uh, of course, uh, the the legend is that they are all named Daryl. That's almost certainly not true, but maybe it is. I just assume they all have slightly different spellings. Yes, like There's one's Daryl with an I, one's Daryl with a Y, one's Daryl with a Q. Sure. We, we don't ask about that one. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, it, it's the equivalent of Caitlyn was uh, 20 years ago when, <laughs> when every other person was named Caitlyn and they all spelled it differently. Dibbled heading into Dwarf Castle and uh, this is where the pan lives.
going to find uh, Bygen in that first spot. Now, Tybalt, not as highly leveled as Possum was, so it might have a little bit more problem, more trouble, but this is just more of an opportunity uh, not to skip arm day. I think Fusonia's got thoughts about this. <laughs> and those thoughts yep. are explosion. Oh, I, I wanted an arm grind. Arm grind. Arm grind. Nobody wants that fun anymore. <laughs> Today's not arm day. <laughs> we haven't seen Rubicon, so it's not leg day either. No. We saw one quarter leg up in the uh, Tower of Zot, but the rest of Rubicon uh, is somewhere on the moon, most likely. And Possum getting through Baron Castle will liberate it uh, with a quickness and then most likely head directly into the basement. Unlike the Ramones, hey daddy -o, Possum will want to go into the basement. And Possum says no to Cecil. Uh, he's done. Um, when you've got a level anybody else, yeah. When you have a level yes party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Possum did make that one change after uh, after his grind, but uh, no more. And Octo Man, uh, giving us two of her legs to stop the walls, which is very nice. Tybalt will watch helplessly as the arm yeah. goes our through. Heroes, our heroes just can never catch that arm. Oh, I mean, you see how fast it's going. I just It'd figured, be impossible for them to catch it. I just figure it's like Thing and it's just scrambling along to grab the, the crystal. Uh-huh. If you saw Thing scrambling around, wouldn't you just feel like, Diane, I'm not going near that. Well, it depends if I'm wearing shoes or not. If I'm wearing shoes, I'd step on it. Tibble gets his pan and uh, the kind of trajectory of his race will be determined by how quickly he goes to chase this, we know. And Pyramid through the D-Machine grind, getting 20 levels on Rosa, 23 on Porum. She'll be 49 on Rydia, yep. And I think it's like 54-ish Cecil picks up. Who are you who are so wise in the ways of science and math? It's 53, I think he picks up. <laughs> A bunch. Quakestone. Oh, it's okay, 52. I knew it was slightly more. I forgot the exact number, but someone who has done this exact grind before. <laughs> and Possum not even letting the Conjurers get a word in edgewise. So we don't get to see That's any rude. of our friends. Yeah. It's like, it's like we threw a party down here and... Uh... We're shooing all the guests away. Oh, and Hush Pyramid going to finish up the giant. Gonna at least take on this first boss here. Come on and come to the place where fun ever ends. Come on in, we're in the giant with Mylon and friends. It's Mylon and friends. <laughs> my voice I tried to have my voice as my like, nah, we're not doing that today now I'm trying to think of like a deadpan uh, a Garfield aphorism like here's a tip don't spit into the wind I don't know I'm not I'm not as good as those I do enjoy lasagna though didn't like didn't SimCity use that one at some point 
you know where I remember seeing it first was in um, Warcraft 2. Uh -huh. It might have been in SimCity, but I do remember seeing it as a as a gameplay tip in Warcraft 2. Possum gets his shiny rock. And Tybalt did immediately go turn in the the pan and yep, going straight to Forge. Going awesome. to pick up this lovely set of Perseus arrows. Ooh, is that what it is? Ooh, because well, uh, Rosa Perseus is... Perseus bow or Perseus arrows, because it's Rosa Hero. Yeah. Honestly, the bow would probably be better, because I don't think we've seen a life staff yet. What would you be looking for in the shop here? Well, the road to the light stuff yet. Uh, yeah. And yeah. the Perseus arrows. There we go. Perseus not even... Oh, go ahead. Possum not even interested in the shop. Uh, Perseus arrows, for those who don't know, are basically glorified charm arrows. Mm. It is nice that he gives you 99 of them. It is. Now, Brad, their charm arrows hit really, really hard. They're like 95 power. Well, our uh, runners continue to uh, speed toward the end here. We're really close to our runners getting the crystal and being on their way to Z. But we have a first place finisher. Rybon has finished in first place with a time of 1.10.33. GG's to Rybon. And uh, Rybon really never has an off day, it seems to me, uh, but he is really rounding into form just in time for this tournament. I, I can't imagine the. I can imagine the route taken to get to, to a 110 finish. Yeah. That's absurd. And Fire Blizzard is encountering that uh, gauntlet. The first fight. Uh, it, it's an imp, it's a conjurer. There's a foo. I don't know. <laughs> Nuke is power. And we, we got there. Yeah. We do not feel ashamed. Well, maybe we should, but we don't. We're having fun. Ooh, and Tybalt misplaced the whale. And I... Is Tybalt going to grind a little bit? Outside I, of Cape Bahamut. I think we're going to see a... Uh, see some gold dragons. Yeah. Maybe. Warlocks, maybe? Well, Warlocks aren't in, the, in, in Cape Bahamut, correct? Warlocks are on level 4. I thought they were in here too. I, I could be wrong. Mm, I'm probably wrong. But Possum Morpheus uh, has already done his grind and he's going straight to the goal here, which is that Crystal Sword Altar. Oh, Behemoths. Ooh. Yeah, you got Trinity Counters on to hit the Behemoth. And you can't run from these. The nice thing is you get to set up uh, pretty much uh, for free. Uh, the behemoths will take a really long time to attack and, and until they counterattack. That's fiery getting through the gauntlet as well. Getting his other half of the forge.
So between those. Uh, Yeah, Fiery Blizzard is in uh, go mode as well. And this has to finish out Baron Castle first. Yes. That's why the um, the third objective isn't lit up, because uh, Fiery Blizzard took on the Baron Throne uh, in between liberating Baron Castle. It's like any kind of uh, RPG side quest where you kind of have unlimited time, uh, even when you're is supposed to be doing something urgently. Oh, yeah, there's, a meteor. There's, yeah. there's a meteor. Yeah, there's a meteor falling to the planet. Let's let's raise chocobos. Yeah. Let's spend an let's do an entire chocobo raising session, which should take <laughs> months to finish. It'll be fine. <laughs> or there's some sorceress attempting to compress time and will complete any second. Let's go play cards for the next a few hours. <laughs> It, yeah, well, the, the meteor just looms for a while. And so does the sorceress. <laughs> just looming. It, the sorceress wants to lift it, listen to uh, Shuffler Boogie 2. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> and Possum does complete that objective, does get his crystal, and also a Luka Key. And Possum will be ready to head into Zeromas should be pretty confident about the uh, party he has. Meanwhile, we have a second place finisher. Coffee and Chocobos has finished in second place with a time of 1.13.35. Plumerian Knight also finished in third with a time of 1.15 even. GG's to those runners. GG's and... Yeah, good job pulling off 115 even. Yeah. On Mario Day of all days. Uh, Fos Morpheus heading over to Troya with pass in hand and crystal in hand. All the way from the crystal sword altar to uh, <laughs> back to the blue planet in order to uh, use that pass. Save a few seconds. Uh, because it is just a little bit faster to use the pass even when you're on the moon. And Hush Pyramid will Hush. be the last of our runners on Restream uh, to take on the Fabul Gauntlet and will be in go mode shortly. But importantly right now, uh, we are on our way to Zeromus. Yeah, and Zeromus is always going to be here, always at the end of the pass. Uh, but, you know, uh, we can't move Zeromus. It's just kind of too big, too ugly, too smelly. We got to keep him right where he is, but do like to give him a makeover, so to that end, there is a library of countless sprites that Zeromus can change into, and so, in order to commemorate that, we do ask a question, and Science Dave, please do the honors. That question is, whose butt are we going to kick tonight? Personally, in, our, in honor of Mario Day, I'm hoping for World 1-1-miss. One, one Yes. That would be something. And if the uh, if the randomizer script writers have a uh, some kind of Mario uh, miss uh, sprite, uh, what's the name of that uh, that dragon that shows up in the uh, lava levels in Super Mario World? I want to say. No, the Resnors are the, like, Triceratops things at the end of the levels. Oh, yeah. No, the... Blarg. Blarg is what I'm thinking of. Is there a Blarg miss? I'd like to see it. That's... Ah! That's so good! <laughs> right! That! Treasury! Do -do 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 Oh, 
rate that treasury! <laughs> yeah, Chad pointing out, we got boxes, that's close enough to being Mario themed. Yeah. <laughs> I rate this, I rate this a 10 out of 10 sprite. I think one of the forums gave a rating of, you know, 99.99. Yeah. Uh, that counter nuke against that Rosa who uh, survives it. Not the ideal uh, person to take that counter nuke, but Possum should be able to weather this storm. Yeah, with the magical onslaught, losing one Rosa, not going to slow us down much. But that's true, one of the forms doesn't have white, so that one can heal. Yeah. And the best defense is a good offense. And that cure four goes off on Rosa before the Big Bang. Perfectly played. Tibble did dispatch the Baron Guards and received just a Leviathan, but uh, was there for the experience, I believe. I'm really there for the Leviathan orb, it seemed. I want to know what that bottom porn should fed, because I see two quad nine whites. <laughs> yeah, must be, I don't know, steroids? Is he giving kids steroids? Is that what the machines are made of? <laughs> oh, and while he finishes this up, Microcorks has finished in fourth place with a time of 122.09. Just beating Possum Morpheus to the line. This nuke might do it. And that will do it. And Possum Morpheus has finished in fifth place with a time of 1.22.34. First place on the restream. A well done race with how many things uh, there are to do. 1.22, still a very incredible time. GG's to Possum. It's GG's. And we'll see if he wants to come in here for an interview. Meanwhile, Tybalt on his way, uh, presumably to the Crystal Sword Altar. We'll see if he wants to make any stops along the way. Fire Blizzard taking on Leviathan. And Hush Pyramid on the way to the moon as well. We are joined by our fifth place finisher tonight, Possum Morpheus. GG's. Hello, friends. GG's. So, what do you think of that seed as a whole, Possum? Uh, it's uh, definitely one of the seeds that uh, if you just do your objectives, you're going to have a good time because, well, <laughs> they all chain together into everything. Uh, but if you go off the beaten path, uh, you're going to have less of a great day. Thank you, Ogopogo, for the flame whip. That was a, a very nice troll uh, by Ogo, and, and that uh, Yong could have been useful with the pink tail, but that hook never showed up. Yep, that was my thought exactly when I got the uh, adamant proc from the Baron Basement. It was like, oh, huh. Well, that means we're never turning in the, the pink tail. Well, that whole fame march was a waste of however many minutes. <laughs> but it'd be like that sometimes. What can you do? Well, did you appreciate uh, the harp song from Super Mario World on today of all days? Uh, I thought it was very appropriate, yes. Um, good work by the, the seed rolling gods or the rando gods or whatever it is. Uh, I think they did all right. <laughs> it's 
Oh, I don't know how much of the uh, Moonvale uh, mixer uh, seeds you have uh, played. What do you think of this uh, flag set overall? Uh, it seems to be uh, a pretty good mix of uh, challenging and approachable, where you have to do a lot of things in order to finish. Yeah, well, uh, I, I haven't run as many of them as some other folks have, just because I'm not participating in the upcoming tournament. But I was kind of the lead designer behind the flag set. So <laughs> I'm a little biased when I say I think it's a great tournament flag set. Um, it sets out to do exactly what I wanted it to do, which was have, you know, finish times ranging, you know, somewhere between like 75 and 90 minutes, make it very powerful as far as all the gear you can get. Um, but also give you a little bit of a new challenge, uh, you know, see hero coming back since we haven't had it since ZZ4. So it's been like, you know, 18 months. Uh, the Z fight is otherwise generally pretty soft. When you throw C Hero in there, it can mix up things for even the uh, the best of runners. So uh, fun to uh, to design this one. Fun to get to play it, uh, and I hope everyone enjoys it because it's been a blast behind the scenes. So what do you think of the uh, high power flag set you created? Deciding to go oops all mages. I mean that happens sometimes. Um, I hadn't done a D machine grind in so long. I don't have my charts handy. Uh, I moved exactly one month ago and I literally don't know where my charts are. So I sat there and paused and I was like, I need to pull up the wiki and find the link to the D machine chart. Cause it's been a month since I've done one of these. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, that'll happen though too. Uh, we at least had Stardust Rods and Life Saves in the Forge shop. So that was nice. Uh, there was a Lunar Staff, I think for sale in Fey March. Um, you know, kind of had just enough good gear. We found Sorp Robes in Dwarf Castle. I wanted to find a tiara um, for Ridia, but never came across it. Uh, probably could have shopped in Baron to see if it was there. But still, I mean, even for mages, we had good gear for them. So you really can't complain whatsoever on that. Well, uh, the real uh, uh, Troya Treasury had a tiara. Uh, we noticed uh, on some other on some other stream. So so you said uh, how interesting the see hero flag uh, was, and for this, the hero was Rosa. Tell us about your thought process when you saw that. I actually don't like a Rosa hero, um, and I'm probably in the minority when I say that, and it's probably a bit of a hot take. Uh, I'm not a fan of a Rosa hero. I think she's an amazing character having your in your party for literally anyone else as your hero. But with her setting the agility, she has very awkward breakpoints. Um, when she gets to basically Z levels, she's going to have about 25 agility, which is pretty awkward because if you don't find agility manipulating gear like ninja hats or crystal rings, she's just below that 28 breakpoint. Um, like in this case, at least I found a curse ring for her to drop her to nine because I hadn't done much in the way of leveling for her. But I'm not a big fan of Rosa as a hero. Her supersmith weapons are also garbage. Uh, with all due respect to the Perseus arrows and bows, just not a fan of a Rosa hero. Again, she's one of the best characters in Free Enterprise. As I don't like her as a hero because of the breakpoints. Just it makes for some weirdness. Well, sorry, it's Dave. Uh, do you have any uh, final questions for Possum tonight? I think we're good. We can uh, you get on with the rest of your night. No, I appreciate Let's that. Any... Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say thank you, Dave and Sheep, for uh, doing the comms. Thank you, Step, for pushing the buttons. Scala behind the scenes, as always. And uh, I hope everybody enjoys the heck out of the upcoming uh, tournament, both the Potion Party flags and Moonvale Mixer flags. So take care, y'all. Everyone have a great night and a great weekend. And uh, yeah, I know thanks. I will see y'all tomorrow for Baron Hero's Journey as well. And thanks, Possum, for uh, your work in uh, designing the flags for the upcoming tournament. It really uh, does look like a, a blast, and uh, we are all really excited uh, to see it and to participate. And uh, your work is one of the big reasons why it uh, looks like it's going to be so much fun. So uh, GG's once again. Thank you, Sheep. I appreciate that. Take care, y'all.
And Hutch Pyramid is actually taking a look at that treasury before uh, presumably heading up to Zeromus. Does have the crystal. And... And... Uh, and Tybalt and Fiery Blizzard also have the uh, crystal doing a little bit more grinding before taking on that Zeromus. And... and uh, with that uh, rosy hero, as Possum was uh, pointing out, just have to be just a little bit safer in order to uh, make sure that your Zoroma's fight goes smoother. And absolutely nothing in the uh, of value in the chest for Tybalt. Yeah, that, that Masa for an edge that is either on the giant or behind the package. Yeah. Either way, gonna stay there. And yeah, hiding alongside, I believe Sid is the other one we haven't found. That's right. And so, uh, Possum finishing in fifth place. We haven't had a finisher since then, so... Uh, as far as our runners are concerned, sixth place is still open and would be a very respectable showing. We had 14 runners uh, starting the race here tonight. And Tybalt uh, going to check out the hairdryer chest. An adamant armor would really be a piece of gear that would make a big difference still at this point. That's a rare adamant seed without adamants. Yeah. Uh, no hook. Uh, and and our tracker Step Lively uh, informing us uh, Ruby in uh, Rubiconte in the super cannon room. That's where the leg was hiding. Uh, that had the hook. The Murasame altar, the, the one at the top uh, of the lunar subterrain held that tower key in order to get there. So, so we that, really did want to do leg day today. Yeah, that would have been a really long trip. Oh, and Tybalt does get nuke. So more than uh, uh, more than obtaining a piece of gear, uh, getting nuke on that kid. That is. I believe the second piece of fine steel we've seen show up in three chests for Tybalt. <laughs> and Hushed Pyramid will be uh, our next runner after Fiery Blizzard to get into Zeromus. Uh, and will be about, I'd say about 45 seconds behind. Roughly. We do see with our party makeups... It looks like we're going to see pretty much standard reflex strats from both these runners. Mm -hmm. And Fire Blizzard taking a while to get that uh, crystal off does bluff uh, with Palin. So even though Fire Blizzard entered the Zeromus fight way later, we'll actually get the crystal off, or way earlier, we'll get the crystal off later. And are we going to get another treasury theme? All right. The Zeromus theme is a great, great theme. Uh, apparently, the uh, treasury theme button is now broken. We hit it too hard. Well, Phosphor Fuse was just in here. I would, I would expect the button for teeth marks. <laughs> We'll get uh, the Silk Web off uh, Hush Pyramid. And that's the... Uh, that's a Rydia getting that uh, counter nuke. Probably the wrong uh, person, but uh, we'll get an Elixir off on her and she'll be okay. That uh, Elixir's not going to fire in time. Ooh. Dodge, Rydia, dodge. Mm, dodge can't like dodge. It depends on it. <laughs> and she knows. Well, she didn't dodge, but... 
that big bang did less than 200 damage on her. Oh, what did she, she dodged, have? She dodged three of the four damage rolls. Yeah. Wow. If you could dodge a big bang, you could dodge a ball. You most certainly can. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, that is huge. The five Bs of Zeromus damage, dodge, <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, danger. Uh, <laughs> uh, dat, Starvale. <laughs> yeah, drain and damage. <laughs> Magics uh, become invalid. That's what typically happens with a black hole. I think that's just science. Would you agree, science, Dave? I would. Science checks out here. Yeah. Black holes do in fact devour magic, especially light elemental magic. Ooh, and Hutch Pyramid has to take a reset. Moonblaze will finish his in sixth place with a time of 1.33.59. GG's to uh, Moonblaze Wolf. Great to see them uh, uh, doing so well in the race. And Hush Pyramid will get right back into this Z fight. We'll lower that battle speed a, a little bit, and that's a great idea. Fiery Blizzard looks to be in decent shape here, Dave. I would agree. This seems to be a reflect fight going about as well as you'd expect. Fiery's a good, Fiery's a good health. Uh, this is a direct nuke, so I think Fiery was doing some math. Yeah. Or, I okay, hadn't done enough to push to the next phase yet. And that uh, counter nuke right on the uh, person with the veil. Wonderfully done. Oh, Fiery Blizzard is doing Foo and Friends. Ooh. I see. So, Dave, uh, for those of us who are kind of unfamiliar with the Foo and uh, Friends uh, technique, how does this work? So, it's basically a reflex strategy, but rather than. Your main damage deal is going to be Fusoya. It's still generally 1200 strats, you know, where you're trying to make Zeromus do a lot of damage by bouncing nukes onto itself, as you see from the crystal use. Talon's contributing by bouncing lit threes, because that's going to do more damage. Yeah, it has that's... multiple star veils up to bounce back the right. automatic nukes that get triggered uh, if a direct spell goes on him. And actually, like, uh, a, a lot of the uh, counter uh -oh. nukes have been really well targeted. Uh, was that nuke Fudas cast direct targeted or bounced? That was bounced. Okay. Asking for a friend. That's going to be Blizzard, because that was a direct target and nuke, bad things were about to happen. Yeah. So. If you direct target a nuke, that leads... If you do it at the wrong time, that leads to a health refresh. Uh, and that hit uh, Zeromus over into the next phase. And then you kind of have to do the whole thing all over again. Reapply all your star veils. Uh, it just leads to a mess. It does. However, we got this, you know... We're just doing our normal 1200 strats right now. Here comes Big Bang out. This Big Bang should be nerfed. Yep, no problem. Uh, the problem that can come up is the black hole that follows this Big Bang. Yes. If it comes at the wrong time, 
it could lead to a, uh, a cast directly on to one of your characters. And that Big Bang, even though it didn't kill anybody, it still saps that health. And both the twins uh, looking a little, little peaked right now. They're fine. Tibble's got a really heavy Big Bang. In fact, they're so yeah. fine that uh, that's a crash bang on Fiery's side. Yeah. Fire Blizzard deciding I don't need no stinking grind. <laughs> And Fiery Blizzard finishing officially in 7th place with a time of 1.40.14. GG is the Fiery Blizzard. Devil tried to scramble to, uh, to get back into it, not able to do it, but we are joined by our 7th place finisher, Fiery Blizzard. GG's. Thank you. Oh man, that seed was uh, go deep mission, go deep mission, go deep mission. No. <laughs> yeah. I see your 99% of his training is paid off. I I actually think I've done Fu and Friends once in all of 99 percenters because I refused to do it, but it was the price of not demachining with mage, 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 and punch mage available. So. Yeah, it kind of goes against everything the, the flag set is supposed to stand for. You know, you, you have access to these big uh, weapons and uh, you get so much Hanzo steel and, and nice swords from the trap chests and yet no bruisers showed up. That is until what, Kane? I can't even remember where Kane was. Dwarf? I think. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That was, And that was a, uh, a very roundabout way to get the magma key. No, that was uh, an interesting seed for sure. It felt like, again, just to tell uh, the darkness. It was just like, I'm thinking to myself, there's got to be an adamant armor somewhere in the seed, right? Like, it shouldn't be required. It shouldn't be a good idea to do a machine. Get some levels. It's like, no, I'm fine. And then at the end, I'm like... I need a plan to actually beat Z, and I really don't want to do Fu and Friends, so I went to Ribbon, hoping the hook would show up, and so an adamant armor that I just don't have to care. That didn't work out. It's like, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that hook was uh, way down a rabbit hole. Uh, you could have done the Murasame altar to get the tower key, and the hook was uh, in the super cannon room. Ah. Uh. Yeah, it felt a little bit bad getting underground at like 53 minutes. It's just like, well, let's do the rest of the entire overworld before you check your D mist. So, it happens. I did not 17 out of 17 this seed, so it's an improvement. And yeah, so, uh, go ahead. I was gonna ask uh, what your favorite part of this uh, of this flag set is. Of this flag set, Ooh, um, it's like a mixture of things that I like and don't like about this flag set. And it's the same for the other one, where it's like I want to combine certain flags. Um, I always enjoy a good sea hero seed. I think it's a really fun uh, flag set. Um, I will say probably what my favorite part about this would be uh, restricting Fu. Let's put it that way now. <laughs> um, I max wonder tier why. Five, yeah, the max tier five is interesting. Um, you know, I went pretty early. I was hoping to find a heroine robe somewhere because it's like the premier tier five item that you can find. Uh, but nothing really particularly stands out in terms of like Oh, this is a really great part of the flag set to me. Um, it's kind of a mixture of things. I mean, the adamant armors can go one way or the other, whether or not you like overwhelming power. And it just, it's one of those things we, I know we talked about it in previous tournaments, or I know Possum's talked about it in previous tournaments, where it's like, can you really afford to fade, say, Eplin Castle when T8s are there 75% of the time in T Wildish? 
And the difference between having an adamant armor and not having an adamant armor is huge, right? Um, so I think it's interesting. I wish, um, I kind of like K-Trap portion of the potion party as much as I don't like the S wild portion of it, which is why I said I would like to combine the two. Uh, but again, hero is always fun. Uh, didn't really affect too many things when Curse Ring was just sitting in Antlion Cave in the passerby chest. But no, it's fun. It's always nice to trip over a Curse Ring. Yes. Could not trip over a heroin robe, though. Those just did not exist for me. But, uh, oh. no, I almost wish that was not e toggle and rather e no XP, <laughs> but can't have everything. Well, Dave, any uh, oh. further questions for Fire Blizzard tonight? Yes, uh, so you'll be joining us in the upcoming Evelyn Elixir League? Yeah, I will. I honestly was thinking about skipping this because neither of the flag sets were like something I was gung ho about. But then the fact that it's a team format, um, there are a few other people that I play with in a different Discord that uh, wanted to get together a team. So I think we're going to all submit for that and it should be fun. I am looking forward to seeing how the league format works. Uh, looking forward to playing some people that uh, maybe I have a small chance to beat. But we will see. But I, like I said, I think the fact that it's a team tournament or a league tournament is something that will bring in a lot of people that were on the fence of playing this tournament, and that I'm one of those people. So I am looking forward to it. Well, it's good here. We look forward to see you and the rest of your team play. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Be a great time. And based on your uh, performance uh, tonight, it looks like uh, there will be a whole lot of people you'll be uh, capable of beating. So we look forward to seeing that in GG's once again. Thank you. Uh, real fast, thanks Dave and Chief for both uh, commentating step for tracking. I believe last time I was on, you were also tracking. So thank you again. And Scala, of course, for the restream. I hope everyone has a good night. And Hush Pyramid finished in 8th place with a time of 1.43.58. And Hush Pyramid will not be joining us uh, for an interview, uh, but uh, did make the same joke that I did, that the sprite was a 10 out of 10. So, uh, great minds think alike. GG is to Hush Pyramid and Tybalt with the crack and the bang and the boom and finishes in ninth place with a time of 147.33 ggs to tybalt as well a really tough uh zaromas uh Zeromus not playing nice uh tonight but uh tybalt did really well to get through and that highlights what possum was talking about earlier where rose's agility could just make fights awkward yeah it's amazing how much uh, Z will find a way to hurt you if you give him just a little bit of room. Uh, but Tybalt made the adjustments and made it through. And the second fight was actually fairly quick from Tybalt. It was. That also shows just how much we take perfect anchoring for granted. Hmm. Yeah. It, when you can really uh, manipulate uh, your uh, your party, uh, your anchor, uh, to get that perfect agility. When you don't have it, uh, you got to find a way around it. And uh, uh, it's that improvisation that will uh, uh, that will be a real hallmark of the upcoming tournament. And we are joined by Tybalt GG's. GG's. So uh, that Rosa hero uh let what did you think when you originally uh found her and then uh and then what did you think of that Zeromus having to take on that with that rosa hero <laughs> rosa hero i'm not it's fine i have a guaranteed white mage it's fine I, i'm happy 
and then they came to all the other characters like, here's a forum, here's another forum, here's a palum, here's a food. It's like, yay, reflect shots. And then finding the darkness at Baron, and I'm like, well, I know what everybody else did. So I, I was thinking I was ahead when I decided to do the, the Baron basement and got the atom. I'm like, cool. And then saw the darkness, and I'm like, well, I'm behind now. As that would lead you to deciding, I don't feel like doing D-Money. Yeah, I, I mean... Uh, you find the darkness late, and you're just like, I, I'm not d money I, I can get my levels other ways, like Behemoths. And if I, I, I looked at Palum's experience, 14,000 left. I'm like, come on, fine, I'll do the hair dryers. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll spike a piece, good piece of gear. How about new? No. <laughs> Can I interest you in second Hanzo? Like 20 second Hanzo. Yeah, I was like Hanzo, Hanzo, fake Hanzo. <laughs> the word was an edge. <laughs> yeah, either at the package or at the giant. I guess you weren't committed enough to finding him. I, I really didn't get it. I, I saw the <laughs> XL on the sound. Like, XL is cool. Give me a Cecil. Hey, sweet. I got a Cecil. Uh, but I have nothing but mages, so mm, yay. Uh, I I wanted to get your impression. The part of the seed that made my heart go into my throat uh, was finding the wyvern in the changing room. Uh, did that make you nervous for a second? It's witch burn. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is in that particular spot, it's quite slow. And generally, if you've got some levels, you're going to outspeed it. So you'll probably get one to two attacks off. And if you have enough gear or decent gear, you'll get through the spot just fine. You know, I had Sandy Arrow Samurai Bill. I was fine. Yeah, and uh, Wyvern decided to be nice and just do pollen, make Rosa sneeze a bunch. Yeah, I mean, I, I panicked a bit when I was like, well, I'm like, uh, is it is it regular Wyvern? Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's not. Okay, just Zerk and go. So what do you think of the uh, flag set overall? And uh, tell us about your thoughts looking forward to the tournament coming up. Yeah, this flag set's actually pretty interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm quite interested in this one. Potion, I'm, I'm, I, I, it hasn't really intrigued me that much, but Moonvale Mixer, I'm, I'm pretty good with. And are you going to be uh, joining us for the tournament? Well, yeah, it, it's either I'm going to get with the team or, or join a freelancer. I, I've been joining every single tournament since Football Gauntlet, so I'm always here for the tournament scene. Wonderful to hear. So, Dave, anything? Go, go ahead, Tibble. Did Did you answer the question I had with the names? Uh, what is your favorite Mario game, Sheep? I think that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm I'm a really old school Mario person. Um, and depending on my mood, uh, it's either Super Mario World or Super Mario Two is uh, my favorite. Uh, right. Unless we're unless uh, we're playing with friends, and then it's either Mario Party or uh, Mario Kart 64. Okay, My, mine hands down probably has to be Super Mario Land to the six golden coins. Nice, hmm. Dave. I'd have to say overall, I'm with you on Super Mario World for the most part. It's just so complete, and and it really set the stage. Uh, for everything else. I know there are people for whom uh, Mario 64 kind of changed everything, um, and I never had an N64 at that time, so uh, I came into it much later, but Super Mario World was that game for me where it's like, wow, this is I really think, something. I think my second would have to be the Galaxy games. Mm. I think that's where they got the 3D formula the best. Yeah. Well, Tibbled, I, I do have to ask who uh, you main on Mario Kart. Me? Uh, if we're playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, it's uh, Link. 
I, I'm, a, I'm a Zelda a Zelda fan at heart. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, on Mario days of all days, you're not going to answer a Mario character. It's fine. Yeah, it's totally yeah. fine. Why don't you say Sonic? Just <laughs> I never really grew up with, with Sega, so I never really got into Sonic. I was always a Nintendo. So it was Mario, Star Fox, Zelda, Final Fantasy. Well, I would be giving you the Luigi glaring Mario Kart gif. <laughs> All right, Tybalt. Uh, any, uh, any final thoughts on, uh, on the seed, on March 10th, on the tournament? You know, I, I, just, I just wanted better gear. <laughs> like a heroin roll would have been nice. Eh, fine. No, I mean, I, I did the best I could, and we'll see if I can better improve for the future. And I always enjoy watching these back, so thanks for the uh, commentary and the, the, the tracking and the restream. You know, we may be racing, but y'all put on the show. Well, we couldn't do it without uh, you and your uh, terrific play. So, uh, GG's once again, and we look forward to seeing you again, Tybalt. Yeah, GG's. Have a good one. All right, and Dave, uh, final thoughts from you about uh, about the seed, about the uh, tournament. This was a lot of fun. It looked like it was a fun seat to play. Uh, great yeah. seat to watch. Uh... Give a good sample. This and Monday have combined to give a good example of what we can look forward to in the upcoming tournament. It really does. And, and if the tournament is anywhere near as exciting as the past couple of community races have been, it's going to be a heck of a tournament. So we hope you uh, join us in the Discord for all that uh, and, and keep updated on when the tournament will be happening. I uh, do want to thank one more time, our restreamer Scala Kitty, our great tracker, uh, Step Lively, and thank you, and Dave, for uh, your terrific commentary. Yes, and a big thank, thank you to you as well, Sheep. Uh, and uh, we're going to uh, head over. We're not done with uh, Free Enterprise tonight. Do want to remind you on the main Free Enterprise channel tomorrow, Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern. It's Baron's Heroes Journey. That's always a great time. You know Possum's gonna be there. We hope you'll be there as well. But we're gonna send you over to uh, Beauty and Discovery uh, on uh, his racing account. He's doing a potion party async. Uh, if you wanted to do that async and you don't wanna get spoiled, the async is 2LD3FC, so now's your chance to bail out if you don't want to get spoiled. Uh, but if you want to see more FV, come join us there. And until next time, so long. <laughs>